Hey guys, thank you for checking out this episode. We'd love your support by heading to patreon.com forward slash freshly grounded. It really does make a difference in helping us continue making this content. And if not, no stress. Enjoy. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, brothers and sisters. Welcome to Freshly Grounded episode 205. I just realized I don't have my headphones on, and then you guys will be able to hear a lot of echo. So uh, let me chuck those in. I think that's worked. Um, how is everybody doing? We're back on, uh, we're live on uh, on Freshly Grounded, alhamdulillah. Oh, live streams always scare me a bit. Um, right, we're live on Freshly Grounded, alhamdulillah. Uh, I'm going to give you guys a little uh, bit of information just before we go live uh, with our brother Yusha, Ustad Yusha Evans. Uh, before we do so, um, first of all, the Freshly Grounded game is back in stock. Uh, so do check that out at freshlygrounded.com forward slash the game. Uh, the link for it is in the description. Uh, it's an amazing game. If you haven't seen it yet, um, I've got like a bunch of the cards here, but it's basically conversation cards. Uh, it, the idea is to connect on a deeper level with your loved ones. And um, it's been amazing for so many people and, and, and we really enjoyed the feedback. So uh, do check that out, inshallah. Uh, also, uh, you guys may know or may not know that we have recently begun uh, campaigning uh, for... Uh, to raise money for winter, uh, the winter in Yemen, uh, to help support a family, keep them warm in the winter, and also provide food and water for them. Uh, the link for which is not actually in the description. The link for which is in the bio of our Instagram because I sillyly did not put it in the description of this stream. What I will do is I'll put it in after. So anyone who's watching this on repeat, uh, they can go ahead uh, and donate to that. Inshallah, it would be amazing if you can. And uh, without any further ado, this is episode 205 of Freshly Grounded, uh, so let's get into it. And welcome to Freshly Grounded, the brand new podcast. Well, it's not exactly brand new anymore, is it? Welcome to Freshly Grounded, the podcast. That's better. Created by best friends, Faisal and Sam. Huh? Welcome, I said, welcome to Freshly Grounded. After that bit. Created by... After that bit. Best friends, Faisal and Sam. Really? Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. We are joined by Ustad Yusha Evans. Assalamu alaikum, Ustad. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wow, your audio sounds so crisp. Allahumma barik. I was just mentioning to you off air that I need you to come down to the UK. Come, come back to the UK, inshallah, so you can set us up. Inshallah, it's a lot of it's a lot of work. You know, before getting into all this streaming, I I I, I you know I saw people streaming live and like yeah, that, I could do that. And then you get into it and you're like, uh, this is a lot. No, but Allahumma barik, it, it, it looks like it's paid off. Your 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 setup looks amazing, and we're gonna get into that. Inshallah. Um, inshallah. Just as a kind of a a warning or disclaimer to those brothers and sisters listening, I can hear a lot of. Uh, uh, What's the word now? Uh, worrying sounds coming from my laptop. So uh, if the machine ends up crashing, uh, we'll jump straight back on a live on this YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash freshly grounded. I seem to be going through some technical issues uh, as one always does uh, when going for a live stream. So uh, please bear that in mind. And if this does shut off, then I will, uh, within minutes, inshallah, be able to get everything back running. Um, Ustad Yusha, I think that a lot of people are going to be expecting, uh, or not even just expecting, but looking forward to hearing uh, a lot of beneficial uh, Islamic reminders and, and and stories from yourself, as we always uh, have with you, because you know um, from, from that angle, we we're always inspired to hear from you. Um, however, I think there's also going to be a lot of talk on uh, uh, from a technical aspect, because there's kind of a new uh, a, a new kind of realm you seem to be going into. Uh, what is Muslim Gamer League? Um, alhamdulillah. You know. I, I've lived on the road for the past 12 years. You know that. That's how you've seen me. That's how I've been on Freshly Grounded so many times was because of my travels here and there. And that that was really all I had ability to focus on was the next place I'm going to be. And then trying to create content between that and the few days that I was home. That really like, and then spend time with family, learning. Like I had no time for anything else. I was as as, as thin as, as as you could be, stretched. Um, but I've always 
myself kind of been a gamer, playing video games. I kind of grew up like that. A lot of people that know I, I was not born and raised as a Muslim. I grew up in the 80s. Um, you know, there was no social media, no internet. Our entertainment was the five channels we had on TV, you know, that that that, or we had video games. Um, and I started off with Atari. Yes, that's how old I am. You know, my first game system was an Atari, then Super Nintendo, and the whole realm of things. And you know, my children have kind of, um, you know, taken that on as well. All my kids like to play video games within, but you know, I always try to keep it within moderation. We moderate what games can be played, et cetera, so on and so forth. Trying to you know keep the environment as permissible as possible, but knowing that kids are going to be involved in these types of things um, anyway. And and it's also a time where I kind of bond with my kids, you know, like they like to game, they like tech. They're all kind of in that whole techie wannabe. My 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 youngest son wants to be a, a designer and coder and programmer. And, you know, my daughter's and my daughter's actually probably the biggest gamer of the house. She she likes to play with me all the time, you know. Um, so I, I started thinking while we we're on this lockdown, you know, all that stuff's gonna increase. People are doing more things online. The world is becoming very virtual. I, you know, I had more free time to spend with my kids. And and I was thinking, how can, number one, I turn this into something? Because I'm always looking for a way to turn that which I'm doing into something beneficial. It's kind of like, you know, if, if, if you want to speak to the youth, having like a hustler's mindset for good deeds. You know what I mean? Always trying to find a way to chase up a new avenue for good deeds because traveling the world that's done for now. When that's coming back, Allah, Allahu A'lam. You know, I could continue making videos and then just throwing them out there on the internet, which we're still doing, and 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 see where it sticks. But sometimes that's kind of like throwing spaghetti on the wall and see what noodles stick to the wall. Um, so I'm thinking, you know, how can I connect with an audience? And in and, and social media live, I, I, I do that sometimes, but it's just kind of like, eh. You know, you know me in social media. Um, so... I, you I have thought, a love hate relationship with social media. Love hate relationship it, with social media. It, it loves you and you hate it. <laughs> yeah. So how can I take this hobby which I like, tech, you know, gaming and, and I play and I've been on during lockdown playing with brothers all over the world, you know, that I've met through, you know, social media and stuff like that, the like games. I'm like, how can we do this and not waste time? You know, because we're sitting here for two hours, we're talking to each other, you know, we're, we're like at the end of it, you're just tired and like, eh, what really I get out of there. And then I realized that there's a space and I started to watch, you know, some um, Twitch streamers talking about uh, how to set up, you know, streaming. I said, you know, there's an entertain because I, I saw a report come out probably in April that the streaming industry like YouTube live streaming and Twitch streaming was growing into the largest entertainment niche platform on planet Earth. And I've always and something clicked in my head because I've always said that, you know, Muslims need to be on media. Whatever media is is really catching people's attention, we need to have a voice there. And I've been saying this for 10 years now. That's why I helped, you know, with, you know, TV stations and things of that nature. Now things have gone virtual. So when I saw that the streaming industry was growing to be the largest niche entertainment market on planet Earth, I said, we need to be there. And so I went online looking for some, you know, Muslims doing streaming. And, and there's some Twitch counts with Muslims and and I'm, but you know, it's mostly talks and they're just doing, you know, the same thing that we've always done talks. And I'm, I'm thinking, how can we get the youth? Because the youth don't want to just sit there and listen to talks. You know I mean? It's very hard to keep them like that unless you're, you know, yelling and crying and emotions and you can't do that every day. You know what I mean? You can't be on that level every day. So I'm, I, I thought, how can I create a community here? That's when it clicked in my mind, take the gaming that you do meld it with this, you know, da'wah that you do and put this on Twitch. Try to create a halal platform for Muslims who like the game, which is a large portion of our youth, whether they want to come and admit it or not. I know now because as soon as we created this uh, platform, you know, within three weeks, we have a thousand people coming to our server. Wow. You know, we, we have people interacting on Twitch. We hit affiliate within one month, alhamdulillah, which usually takes, you know, a lot of grinding. So I saw that there was something there. When I when I decided to, okay, I'm going to test the water, I realized after the feedback, there's something there. So this is why I created this platform, especially, you know, for the youth, because I'm thinking I want my children to have an environment, you know, that they can enjoy this type of 
you know, uh, pastime or a hobby in a way that is going to keep them away from all the, the you know, the, the haram that's out there. Because if you go game online, you know, you're dealing with people who are screaming in your ear, slurs and slanders and cussing. And, and if you watch Twitch streamers, half of them, you know, they have music blurring in the background or they're cussing or they're talking about everything that we don't need to be listening to. So I said, let's create a platform that we try to keep it as halal as possible to give the youth somewhere to come to express themselves in a way, but also allow their identity as a Muslim to come forward. Because there are some Muslim streamers out there that do gaming streaming, but they hide their identity as a Muslim because they mm. feel like, you know, mm. that's going to get them some negative feedback. I said, no, let's change that narrative. You know, let's take this market that is growing so rapidly and let's place ourselves in there forward as Muslims, you know, because we do a ri live reminder Monday, Wednesday and Friday before every stream. We spend about 10 minutes uh, with a reminder before we do anything else, you know, so it's 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 just a good environment to, that Muslims can come and hang out with us. And sometimes we don't even do any gaming. We just sit there like on uh, a couple of days ago, we just talked for an hour and a half, you know, and it was just a, an environment. And even a people, some people commented that it feels so good while I'm on lockdown to be able to come just hang out with some Muslims, you know what I mean? And, and we can't go to the masjid. So let's hang out in a halal environment and try to remind each other of Allah and give reminders and things of that nature. More or less letting some more of my personal side that I've kind of leaked out a little here and there with the cars and martial arts, you know, let a little bit more of that out now since I'm stuck at home and I need to find something to do with my time, but also not lose my mind and get some good deeds out of it. So how's the feedback been? Alhamdulillah, so far the feedback's been been very good. You know, there I, I'm I'm sure there's going to be naysayers. You know, I mean, that's that's with anything, um, you know, and there's going to be difference of opinion about this and that. What we're trying to do is keep it within the halal, most halal means possible with what we know is going to happen without our overview anyway. This is going sure. to happen. You, if you go and tell all Muslims, you cannot play any sort of video game or any sort of technology. It is 100% haram. You lose that audience and they're not listening. They're going to do it anyway. Okay, we are going to try to make this platform as permissible as possible and try to keep our youth from getting lost in that mire of the online world. Because that's where everybody's out now. Nobody can go outside. So guess where they're going outside? On their, their phones, on their computers. People are entering into the virtual space even more heavily now than we've ever seen in history. Yeah, I I, I think that look, they they like you said, um, there's a whole bunch of gamers who are Muslim, and for you to be able to almost like say, look, let's unite here at Muslim Gamers League, and then you're giving reminders Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and and you're like you said, it's, they they they're there anyway, and to be able to put something, uh, to be able to basically construct it. Uh, in a manner that is like for khair, I think is amazing, man. Um, and when, even when I ask what the feedback's been like, I'm more intrigued as to what the feedback has been like from the gamers. Like, I'm sure there's been a lot of Muslim gamers who have been kind of um, desperate for this kind of channel. Uh, so, so what's the feedback been like from them? No, uh, uh, um, what, what was the last part of the question? I'm just saying, like the 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 people there there must have been a lot of gamers, as you mentioned, mm. who are Muslim for years, but there's never been a, a channel like this in which kind of Islam is at the forefront of it. And so, what's the feedback been like from those gamers when uh, when they found your channel? They're super. We see them coming into our server every day because that's that's the home. Is we created a Discord um, right. to where that's the home where everybody can go to, you know, to to find out what's going on, to talk to each other, to find out what games that people are into, lobbies. You know, we created a fully functioning Discord server that is run 100% by youth, 100% by youth. Both of my coders and, and, and managers of the server are in high school, alhamdulillah. Wow. One of them's in Connecticut and the other's in Turkey, mashallah. And and and, uh, and I have to give them shouts, uh, Brother uh, Meadow and Dean. They, they do amazing things. It is a I highly regular... I think we have Brother Meadow on the, uh, on the live I'm chat. I'm sure he is. Meadow is on it. Trust me. Yeah. Meadow is on. Whatever I ask him to do, Meadow is on it. Um, he also moderates my Twitch stream. Um, so we're moderated, you know, so there's like 16 bots running. You can't cuss in the server. You can't post links. They get screened. Uh, you have to level, you know, there's all kinds of things. We have a sisters only room where you have wow. to set your status at, in the server as a sister permanently uh, to come into that room. And it's moderated by a sister. And if we catch anybody else, you ban, if you're not a 
sister in that room, you're going to get outed and banned for life. And we've seen so many people come and say, you know, I never knew that there could be a space like this. You know, some other people have tried to create some type of thing like this, but, you know, it always ends up drifting too far, you know, uh, to the to the haram side of things, you know, and they're like, right. this is one where I come where it's actually heavily moderated, sometimes too heavily moderated. Like you try to type assalamu alaikum, you know, and there's an A and two S's right there. They're, you know, the bot is just blocking you yeah. and not letting you, which which is good. You know, I, I even have brother Abba Musab uh, come and say, man, we cannot talk in here about nonsense. They will kick us out. Let's go chat privately. So people know when they come in and see the vibe that this is, we're serious about, you know, keeping it halal. That's kind of the whole concept of this is let's keep this as halal as possible and give these youth techies, gamers, whatever it is, an, an outlet to come and create a community virtually that it doesn't have the toxicity of social media and all of that nonsense. That was kind of like my escape. This is kind of like become my escape from social media. Now I just post on social media and then that's it. I'm out. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm gone. I spend a lot of my time working uh, with with the server and, 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 and with the Twitch stream. So and how, we're going to be going over to doing YouTube live as well. We're going to start that as oh, well. Amazing. How was the uh, how was the setup of the studio? Did you always have it, and you just had to kind of like change a few things, or did you literally build it from scratch? No, no. Um, I, I've I've always had com I've always been into computers, but you know I, I'm a Mac guy for work. I'm a Mac guy just because the 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 ecosystem of Apple yeah. all works together s seamlessly. You know what I mean? Like if I need to have a file on my phone and get it to my computer, two buttons, AirDrop, boom, it's there. You know, so it's, I always have worked with Mac, but with, but for, you know, for the gaming world, you need a PC. Macs are not really built. Macs are built for productivity. They're not built for, you know, gaming and high frame rates and overclocking CPUs and GPUs. Um, so I, I had a minor computer that I helped build with my son. And from that process, I learned how to build my own PC. So I started over the summer slowly collecting bits and pieces as I could find parts, you know, and, and, and find them at reasonable rates and uh, to build my own ecosystem for the PC. But actually to set up a full fledged stream that is high quality, because number one, you know me, I don't like to do anything if it's not as professional as we can make it. Uh, because you want the user, it's all about the user experience. You know, our server is about the user experience. The stream is about the user experience. To do that on a very high level, to stream 1080p quality at a very high bit rate takes a lot of work in terms of getting the audio to sound right, getting the video to look right, getting the, the gameplay to look right, getting all of that up to an encoder or a um, what is I'm looking for? Streamlabs, which then puts it all together. Every, you know, it puts the the cam overlaid on top of the screen, the audio overlaid, the desktop audio, and then getting that encoded properly into a format that they can get fed to stream is a, is a, is a seriously difficult process. You know, it's, it's, it's an, it's a ecosystem that's, we're actually going to discuss that in uh, one of the streams coming up soon. Everybody's wanting me to kind of walk through how I did the whole setup. And it has anybody in my house will tell you it has been a, 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 a pain to say the least, but at the end result, we want the quality of the product since we're representing ourselves as Muslim gamers league. Like we're clearly putting Islam out there. We want to make sure that the first thing you can't say is that we're doing it, you know, uh, with lackluster attempt of quality. Of course, of course. You, the one thing I'm intrigued about here is the fact that you learn how to build the computer by yourself. So you started in the summer, you mentioned building the computer. And I know that for years and years and years, you've been building your own cars and you've been modding up your cars and changing things. And there seems to be a link here. Is there, can you track it back in, can you track it back to psychology? Like what it is about you that seems to want to like learn how to go through the manual process of doing things and doing it to the best of your uh, doing to the best of your power uh, without help in others and wanting to and, want, and, and wanting to kind of take control of it and build it yourself is there something that you can track that back to because you know you do that with the cars you've done that this time around with the com computers and it, it even if you look at kind of your work in like when you're when you're traveling and you're, and you're doing the, the the khutbas and the talks you know I, I, I've been um, you know blessed enough to be around you when you're traveling and, and and be able to 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 meet you when you're when you're kind of touring from one masjid to another and mm. even then you you seem to have this like uh, energy and vibe about you which is very 
um, it's very focused, it's very driven, it's very work centric. It's, it seems very like uh, like your brain runs like a, a process. Your brain always runs like a computer. It, it, uh, you 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 organize your things. You stay in. You you know where you're staying. You're staying in the place that you're staying at for a reason. It's close to this place and it's close to this place and it connects to this. And it seems like there's something in the way that you're wired that 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 makes you think like this. Can you track it back to what that is? I not 100%. I've kind of always been like that. I've kind of wanted to know how things work. I used to deconstruct things as a kid, you know, and want to see because back then technology wasn't where it is today, you know, but you wanted to see how how things work. I, I'm a person, if I'm going to do something, I like to know every finite detail of it. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, I don't want to just be a person who is an in consumer that just trusts in, in, in the product. You know what I mean? I want to know how how does this do what it does? You know, I, at least some basic level and things mm. that I'm really into, like cars, I want to know how does this car work? How does it produce the horsepower, horsepower that it does? Because if I know how it produces the horsepower that it does, I can find a way to increase upon that. You know, and they all all of these w machines that we use all kind of I've, I've realized all kind of model themselves off the human anatomy, you know, like a car, a car has a brain. The CPU, it, ha it has a brain. It has a, 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 um, a computer that tells it how to fire what off and whatnot. It has a nervous system of cables running to it. It has a heart, you know, which is the engine uh, that, that is intaking and exhaling, you know, so it has lungs because it has to breathe. So it's all of these things kind of intrigue me and, and how we can excel upon them. Like improving on the human body, you can improve upon the cars, you can improve upon all technology based on kind of that same principle. Because we don't have anything else to go off except ourselves in the world or around us, really. Even a computer. A computer has a heart. It has a brain. You know, it, it has to breathe. Uh, all of these things are there. It, it, it seems to me like there's a, there's a, there's a like direct connection here between um, l like laziness and lack thereof in, in you uh, and these things because... Uh, so a lot of these things, um, there's an alternative to them, right? And uh, it doesn't mean that the alternative is for lazy people, which is not because I would buy my computer pre-made. I'd buy my car, you know, and accept it. Oh, yeah, it it's how definitely it not laziness. So I don't think it's laziness. However, I think the fact that you do do things manually shows, shows like, a la shows like that you are like the opposite of lazy, right? Like, what's the opposite of lazy? Like kind of what is the opposite of lazy would there be a word for it i don't know if there's a word I'm for sure it but it's it's, it's it's not laziness because some people don't have that mindset they're just not wired like that you know what right. i mean but the fact some people that, just want to buy a phone they don't care how it works they don't care what processor goes in it they don't care what graphics it has they just want something that works and Agreed. that's fine some people are not Agreed. like that. And, 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 and that's what i'm like and that's what i'm like however the fact that you are so kind of like proactive Proactive is what I was looking for. The fact that you are so proactive with wanting to do these things manually shows like like how how unlazy you 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 are, right? And 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 that's what I'm trying to get at. Like when I'm trying to understand the psychology of Yusha Evans, I, I want to understand like where that comes from. Like were you like that all of your life? Because even with setting up uh, the Muslim Gamer League, you would have had to come up with the idea and then decided to actually do it, implement it, build the studio, set it all up. And for a normal person like myself there's a lot of barriers that come in that and those barriers are looking to beat you down those barriers are looking to stop you in your tracks and say and you start thinking you know what yeah maybe it's a bad idea and and and, and often you know there's that famous saying that everybody has a million dollar idea but the ones who uh, are actually successful are the ones who take action right or, or, ex or execution you seem like somebody who who has no fear in executing ideas and that's what i want to know where that comes from because i think that if we can understand like the source of that that's something that may relate to all of us regardless Regardless of whether the people watching and listening are gamers I, or not. I have no idea, but I do know one thing about me is that when I set my mind to want to accomplish something and like, let's say the end goal in my mind was, you know, to create a streaming platform that can represent Muslims. I, that's where I start the end goal. What do I want the end goal to be? This is where I want to get. I, once that's become like cemented in my mind, like this is what I want to accomplish. The same with like building a car. You know, that, that, that I want to build a super high horsepower monster. 
you know, or the da'wah that I've been doing for 12 years. You know, I want to reach as far as I can globally on a global scale to tell as many people about Islam as I can. When I did martial arts, I want to be the highest level black belt I can possibly physically reach to. Once I, I'm a person who once my mind is set on that final end goal and I know what it is, I do not give up. You know what I mean? I'm not a person who will... obsessive with it? I become obsessive. Yes, yes, that, that is it. I become obsessive about goals. And I get frustrated just like everyone else. You don't know how many times building uh, my race car, I got frustrated because things don't work the way you want them to. It doesn't, something breaks. Martial arts, you get hurt. You know, the Dawa, you have setbacks. You know what I mean? You know, you know, things are not going the way you want them to. You get banned from a country or what have you. PC streaming setup. So many times where it hasn't worked, you everything's working the way you want it to. You come back in the next morning, you turn everything on. Now something has a conflict and the audio doesn't sound right. And you now need to spend four hours, literally sometimes five hours, just figuring out why your audio is choppy. But I'm, I'm a person that even when I feel like I want to give up. Oh, no, we're not talking to you, Siri. Forgive me about that. No worries. In the meantime, I'll say a uh, big jazakallah khair to Tahir Amin Gaming for the super chat. Thank you so much. Uh, who says, my sister listens to your podcast every day. Jazakallah khair uh, for that super chat. There, We don't get super chats so often on Freshly Garnered, but it's very, very uh, uh, lovely to see uh, them come through. Jazakallah khair for supporting our podcast. Um, Yusha, while we have the break, actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to very rudely butt you in and I'm going to take it to the to, 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 to the audience because uh, we do a live stream and I'm often really bad at actually incorporating the fact that we're live on on the chat. Yeah, I'm uh, watching on, I'm on, watching all of the chat messages as well. So I'm going to I'm going to bring in some a of the number of them. To, yeah, I'm going to bring um, some in that were right at the beginning. Let me go all the way back up. Um, okay, we have a message here from uh, the study girl who said, Asalaamu Alaikum Brother Yusra, how are you? Are you a constant part of any particular media outlet? Is there somewhere where we can basically search Yusha Evans's most recent lectures, basically? Um, that would be on, on YouTube if you want the lectures. Those are on YouTube. I'm actually now working on, since I'm home all the time, getting all of my content back because, um, you know, as I've traveled the globe, people have recorded my lectures and thrown them all over the internet. You search you, Shevins, you go all over the place. Um, but at the end of the day, I own that content. You know what I mean? It's it's my content. So I'm planning on trying to re-bring some of that back and put it back on um, you, Shevins Media so that kind of people can have one place to come and see them. So I'm working on that now. So it will be Yusha Evans Media is where all of that's going to go. As well as... What about you Path know, to Peace? Can they find it on Path to Peace? Path to YouTube Peace channel? is the Reflections Podcast. Reflections Podcast is the path... Path number two, peace. I was about to plug that separately. Is That's just going to be for the podcast and all um, a mental health series that we're working on coming up soon, inshallah. That is going to be on the path, uh, not path, path number two, peace. And actually, a as we started, the Reflections podcast for this week was premiering. Um, so that's that's wow. over there now where we talk about the dilemma of the Dawah scene. Oh, I, no. I, got, I, I got a little bit heavy. Um, We've got... Uh, <laughs> I've been home too long. Two live Yusha Evans is running on YouTube at the same time currently. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I no. think the premiere just ended a few minutes after we we came on. But there's the path to peace, and uh, that's where you can find all of my lectures. But if you want like the lecture lectures, those are on regular YouTube under Yusha Evans Media, or you just have to search Yusha Evans and find all the people that have recorded and uploaded stuff from me. Uh, the podcast, particularly, its only home is it resides on Path the Number Two Peace. Or on Apple Podcast under Reflections. That's okay. that's the only home of those. Okay, this 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 is this whole stream is going to be a bit erratic and a bit all over the place because we are going to get questions and I'm going to try and use them um, and they're just going to be kind of yeah, as when worry. they come in. And so uh, there's a question here, kind of more on the Islamic side of things, and it says uh, uh, by Faoud, and it says I don't even know if I pronounced that name correctly. Faoud, Faoud, uh, or Fuad. Uh, how to get rid of jealousy, Sheikh, specifically these days with uh, media and I suppose social media? I, I, don't, I don't know if there's any surefire way to get rid of jealousy. Um, beyond the, the best way to, because jealousy is, we, we have to first say that jealousy is only allowed in a certain number of, of, of cases, like jealousy for someone's good deeds, jealousy for someone's knowledge uh, of Islam or the Quran, uh, things of that nature. But the, the bad form of jealousy comes in when we think that someone has something better than what we have. You know what I mean? And 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 number one, we need to realize that most of that jealousy that you feel because of social media 
is fake. Nobody's living that life that they claim to live on social media. We've discussed this before. Nobody's mm. living that life. It's like you watching a movie and, you know, seeing someone living like, a, you know, a kingpin and being jealous of them. You don't do that because you automatically in your mind know this is not real. You know what I mean? Social media is the same way. Very few people, maybe 0.001% of people live a, a, a real life of, on social media. Like what their social media is, is who they really are, what they really do in, the, in their daily life. So know that that's not factual, number one. Number two, gratitude. Being grateful for what you have. Being grateful for what you have is the best cure for jealousy. Because when you realize that everything that you possess right now is because that's exactly what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants you to possess, wants you to have in your life. And if you want more, if you want more, you won't get it by being jealous of people on social media. Allah told Musa to tell Bani Israel, La in shakartum la izidannakum. That if you are grateful to me, I will give you more. So gratitude is the key to having more. Is the key to having more. Jealousy actually makes you lose what you already have. Because in the reverse of that, Allah says, and if you are ungrateful, know that my punishment is severe. So in gratitude, when you look at someone else's life and you become jealous of what they have, that means you are ungrateful for what you have. Therefore, it restricts what Allah gives you, if that makes sense. It's a double-edged sword. If you're grateful for what you have, Allah will give you more. And if you feel jealousy for someone else, like you see a brother who has something nice, mashaAllah. When you see that and you feel that jealousy, make dua to, for Allah to give him more. Make dua wow. for Allah to give him more. If you see a brother's gotten a nice car, mashaAllah, may Allah give him better than that. Wow. That trains your heart to realize that you should be grateful for what you have and you should want for people to have more. Then that you in turn reminds... will come to you because when the Prophet والسلام, said, when you make dua for someone else, for your brother or your sister in their absence, for whatever good for them, doesn't matter. Any good you make dua for, for your brother or your sister in their absence, the angels that are around you in hearing that, they say, Amin wa iyak. They say, Amin and to you as well. And to you as well. So if you see something, you know, a sister or a brother has something that you feel jealous over, stop yourself right there and make dua for them. Sincere dua, may Allah bless them in what they have and give them more. Because then the angels are going to say, Amin wa iyak, and to you. And we know the angels' duas are not, they're, they're answered. So this is a very simple way. Gratitude, first realize that not everything is what it seems. Gratitude, and then making dua for that person. Everything's not what it seems though. Even these rappers that everybody thinks live in lifestyles of glitz and glamour, they're living in rented homes and leased cars. They don't own mm. almost any of it. It's a yeah. total facade. You know, when you mentioned uh, jealousy, it reminded me of something that I read uh, earlier about character, right? And uh, I actually saved it. And now that you mention it, I actually think it's really, really valuable uh, to bring up. And it says... Um, it said... Uh, it said that the scholars, they say that all good manners can be traced back to four narrations, four ahadith. And uh, mm. the four were uh, one hadith from the Prophet wasallam, who said that whoever believes in Allah and the Day of Judgment should say that which is good or remain quiet. The second, when he wasallam, said, from the perfection of one's religiosity is to leave that which does not concern him. The third was when he wasallam, said, don't get angry. And the last one, when he وسلم, said, none of you truly believe until you love for your brother what you love for yourself. And so those four, if we just reflect on them, I'll, I'll repeat them again for the people listening. You know, now, Before you do that, everybody listen. This should also be a disclaimer. You should have to sign a contract to these four before entering social media. SubhanAllah. These are the four. Not listening to these four things are our biggest con destruction as a community and the reason for the toxic community of Muslims online. Right here. SubhanAllah. So uh, again, first one, whoever believes in Allah and the day of judgment should say that which is good or remain quiet. The second, from the perfection of one's religiosity is to leave that which doesn't, does not concern him. That one's a powerful one. Uh, the third, la taghdab, don't get angry, which is just amazing because it's just so simple. It's three words, don't get angry, right? And like it's, it's so, so many issues. Um, and then the law, and that's one that, to be honest, subhanAllah, I feel like a hypocrite reading these out loud. Uh, and the fourth one, uh, none of you truly believe until you love for your brother 
what you love for yourself. And like I said, I feel like a hypocrite reading those out loud because they're things that I struggle with, all four of them uh, as well. All and of us. So, um, but you realize that any time, it's almost like any time I've had like regrets in my character of how I've, how I've like displayed myself, it's probably because one of those four is what I've been lacking in. Mm. Yeah, I mean, we all the, the, we all struggle with them, but the fact that you know you're struggling with them is a sign of faith. And this has been told to me by by many scholars that I've had the chance to sit with is that when one feels their sin, it's a sign that Allah has not removed faith from their hearts. It's when you stop feeling the sin. It's when it stops bothering you is when you are in huge trouble, in huge trouble. And and that's something a lot of I've had to deal with a lot with our youth, you know, is 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 that they feel bad for the things that they've been doing. And I tell them that that's a sign of good faith, but they let that they let shaitan use that. Uh, uh, what is the word I'm looking for? That guilt and grief as a means to say Allah doesn't love you anymore. So just go on and, you know, you might as well just go ahead and jump full full on in, in, into this life. No, 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 no. That's that's a that's a trick. That's a quick ploy by shaitan. As if, if you do not feel the sin, that's when you should be concerned because the heart has become hardened and faith doesn't reach into it anymore. But as long as you are still feeling your sins, you still have that chance to, to, to make amends because that's actually the first key to tawbah is that you feel remorse. That is actually like the, the, the pre-qualification of repentance to Allah is that you feel remorse for what you have done. That is where it starts. So if you have that first step, the next steps are quite easy after that. You repent, you try to make amends, you try to make a change and you try to move on from it. So as long as you're feeling that, that's good. But yes, we all have areas where we could improve upon, especially with these four things. Like I said, social media, you should have like a disclaimer as a Muslim before you come to social media, agree to these four terms. And if you violate these four terms, we ban your IP address from any social media account for the rest of your life. Yeah, it would save us, I, save a lot of us. We've got an especially, from... especially it is part of faith. It is part of one's faith to stay away from matters that do not concern them. Because that's the sad thing about social media is that everybody thinks everybody else's business is their business. It's not your business. But we open ourselves up to that as somewhat as well on social media. It's kind of like that double-edged sword. You're throwing yourself onto the public platform so you give the right to people to criticize you. But then when they do criticize you, they're incurring wrong. I don't. It's, it's one of those things where I always fight back and forth about just deleting it all forever. I know when we, you and I speak so regularly about that, I know that you're like really, it kind of like uh, always in this, always, but I think you manage it well. I think you manage it well because you, you do seem to have that distance with it. However, you're, you're able to use it for the good. And, and look, we can't deny the fact that Allahumma Barik, over the years, you know, you said for over 20 years now, you've been traveling the world um, uh, in the da'wah and to, to not utilize the fact that people, you know, are listening to you, uh, you know, would be would be a shame, and the fact that you are utilizing it uh, for some khair is is really amazing. I commend you for that, and I know uh, you're not going to want to hear that, but it, it's just the truth. I'll throw it to a question we've got from Imran. Uh, brother Imran Hami Hamidon has said, um, as a parent of kids who are into gaming, how do you manage to maintain them on a healthy balance of allowing them to gain, allowing them to game without getting them addicted, and simultaneously not being overly strict? That's an amazing question. It is a good question, but it, it, it is also one of those questions where you can give minor guidelines, but every home is different. You know what I mean? Every circumstance is going to be different. But you have to kind of look for the triggers of addiction uh, with regards to anything, with regards mm -hmm. to anything. Um, for instance, if, 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 you know, if, if your internet were to go down for a week, would your children lose their absolute minds? Um, I, I, I'm actually asking myself that question seriously right now about my own household. If we lost internet for a week, you know, would my children have withdrawals from not being able to be online and connect with their friends? If, if that's the case, then you have a problem um, that you need to start meeting away from. If it takes them away from their responsibilities, you know, such as salah, such as schoolwork, such as interaction with their brothers and sisters or, or physical peers, because you don't want all of your friends, I mean, all of your children's friends to be virtual because that's just not reality. You know, you have to look for these triggers and find that balance. What I look for is that this is something that before doing it on streaming, like now I see it as kind of like a mission to take, you know, uh, it's also taking some of the fun out of gaming for me, no lie, because now I'm seeing it as like a thing that I need to do to push this platform. But that's OK. You know, that's a sacrifice to, to, to get this out there. 
you know, but looked at it as a downtime, um, you know, something that you could do in lieu. Yes, of course, in some people want to say, you know, in your free time, you could be reading Quran. In your free time, you could be reading Hadith. Those same people that comment that I respond in your free time, you could not be commenting on my social media as well. You know, there's there's so many other things that we could be doing with our free time, but we were not meant to be, you know, that kind of perpetual in worship in the masjid 24 hours, seven days away. You know, we have to find that balance. Even the Prophet ﷺ enjoyed hobbies such as watching wrestling, running with Aisha, you no know, we're not, and I'm not trying to compare the two. We don't, brother. You should does not need to get, you know. I don't, I don't need all that. But what I'm saying is that we have things that we do that are not considered, you know, worship that are downtime. I could say the same thing that if you're just sitting on your couch doing nothing, you're wasting time. This is haram, ahi. Get up and do something. You know what I mean? No, we all have to have that period of kind of rest and 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 relaxation and downtime uh, to explore who we are as human beings. As long as that is not interfering with our connection to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, our connection to other human beings, it is not becoming addictive to the point to where if we take it away, there'll be a withdrawal. That's the one thing you have to look at with anything in this dunya. Ask yourself, if it was taken from you tomorrow, what would your disposition be? And if your disposition is the point where you're like, oh, I couldn't even imagine that, then this thing is a fitna for you. This thing is a problem for you. Like, yes, I love race cars. Anybody who knows me closely knows that like that Mustang that I built with my own two hands from scratch was like, you know, uh, it, it, it was it was something precious to me. But at the same time, if I if something happened and it caught fire and burned, which I don't have anymore, you know, we talked about this last time when I had my surgery, I sold it uh, and that didn't bother me. You know, it didn't bother me to sell it. If I if it were to crash and burn and I would not feel any different, you know, I'd be like, OK, I had it. Now I don't have it. Alhamdulillah, Allah gives Allah takes away. So you have to put everything in its place. If that makes sense. If that makes sense, you should be worried about losing your faith, losing your memory of the Quran, losing Allah. that should bother you. Things in this life, if you have them, be grateful for them. If you don't have them. Be grateful for that as well. You know, so for parents, moderate. Watch your children. Make sure that these things are not becoming uh, a, an addiction that is affecting them. And if you see it affecting your child in a negative way, don't be afraid to take it away. Don't be afraid to take it away because at the end of the day, you have to be a parent. You have to be a parent 100%. Uh, so you always have to kind of try to modulate that balance between you know, uh, fairness and strictness, inshallah. You know, there was a lot of points that you just made that like reminded me of of so many different things, and and um, we have another question that, that that I wanted to ask. But before beforehand, there was um there, there, there was something else that that recently um, that recently hit me, and and uh, I'm trying to just track it back because as you were speaking about it, it came to my mind, and Yeah, it was this concept that you just mentioned, right? You mentioned about everything having to be for for Allah and stuff like that, and it, it was the one that is so commonly heard that we talk about that we heard so many times. But it's this idea that if you focus on the dunya, you'll Allah will make you busy with it. But if you focus on the akhirah, and everything you do has a like a akhirah like intention, um, which is obviously something we have to battle with. But if we if we focus on the akhirah, then the affairs of our dunya will will, will almost be, will be like, fixed for us, right? Yes, there's a hadith. The Prophet ﷺ said, "Whoever wakes up in the morning, and their uh, their their mind is completely focused on dunya. That's it. That's all they can concept is what can they get from this life. Allah will place poverty between their two eyes, meaning that they'll be poor, and if they have everything, they won't have contentment. Wow. You know what I mean? They won't have they won't have contentment. They'll be poor, wow. and they will not get from this world anything more than what Allah had already pre predestined for them to have." But if someone wakes up in the morning and their uh, mind is uh, focused on the affairs of the akhirah, meaning they're living in this world, you're doing things, but your mind is on akhirah as well. Like for me, with the gaming thing, how can I take this hobby that I love with my children and turn it into hasanat? You know what I mean? How mm. can I be playing, you know, this game and 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 turn this into a means to to get some good out of it? Maybe, maybe if Allah accepts it. Whoever's mind is focused on akhirah, the Prophet والسلام, said. Allah will place richness between their two eyes. Either they will become rich or they will be content with everything that they have, which is the true richness. And Allah will force the world to come to them even though they do not desire it. 
So that's 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 the focus is where your mind is at. And this is also in the Quran. Allah says, uh, in indeed in the Messenger of Allah is a, a beautiful example. Li man kana yarju Allah wal yawm al akhir. Those whose hope is with Allah in the last day, meaning that their focus, their intent, their their preoccupation might be you know here and there, but their absolute preoccupation is with Allah in the last day, um, then they will be supremely successful. And those who remember Allah greatly, with that Allah kathira. There's a um, there's a there's this like qaida and this principle, obviously, um, that like that 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 you that. Essentially, like what we love for ourselves, uh, the, the the hadith that we I think it was in the in the, in the four characteristics in the four characteristics essentially that um, none of you will reach true uh, righteousness until you love for your brother what he loves for himself. And uh, there was there was as we know like another principle that the very similar to this, basically almost exactly the same that the that the Sahaba used to um, kind of often say. And and uh, I remember Sheikh Tim saying uh, in his tafsir of Surah Al Fajr. That um, some of the Sahaba they used to have a sweet tooth, right? They used to like they used to like sweets, and he said that. Um, so they would often give out sweets, and they would give out sweets because they would go around saying that um, uh, we wouldn't reach true righteousness unless we give from what we love, and they loved mm. sweets, so they, they they would often give uh, kind of something sweet away. And um, yes, yeah, it's, it's a it's a kind of powerful concept. Uh, we we even, have a question even, here from. Even in that hadith, Imam Nawawi, because he recorded this in his Arba'in, Imam Nawawi commented on loving for your brother what you love for yourself. That brother in this particular hadith referred to brother in humanity, meaning oh, really? that you wow. don't have true faith until you love for other human beings what you love for yourself, which wow. the end goal, you know, you can take it as fine out as I love chocolate, so I give away chocolate to other people because it's giving from what I love. But the end goal of that is that what is the thing that we desire most for ourselves? Is Jannah. Jannah. We want to go to Jannah. So you don't have true faith until you desire for every other human being what you desire for yourself, which is Jannah, which then circles back to the da'wah that you don't have true faith until you're really out there trying to help other people to the paradise that you yourselves are striving to get to. SubhanAllah, it's a very deep hadith. Uh, I, uh, I think I spoke to you the first time I met you about this this lecture that you did in Jannah, like the famous lecture that you did in Jannah when I think I think that time you had like lost your notes or something or you lost your iPad so you just like you just oh you yeah like yeah yeah I think you said you had an entire lecture planned and it was like a one and a half hour lecture or something crazy like that and then it didn't and show then you up said, on my iPad I've lost my notes so I'm just gonna talk and you did the most powerful lecture in Jannah that like is just heart trembling and um uh, I, I, and you were mentioning so much about oh wow we just got another um, uh, super yeah, chat we have 50, 50 came about Allah be pleased with you both I mean may Allah bless you uh, subhanAllah I mean jazakallah khair thank you so much for supporting the podcast it really does mean so much um yeah, what, what, so so let me ask you now because that's that that was quite a dated uh, lecture, right? And uh, as time goes mm. on, your uh, every one of us, uh, depending on the time and what we're going through at that time, our like um, goals or like um, uh, intentions kind of change within 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 like what we desire. And so at the time you were talking about what you what you're looking forward to, inshallah, if Allah may Allah grant you jannah, Sheikh. Um, uh, what what is it I mean, now what? that like about Jannah that is like really at the forefront of your mind? I think back then, I know what it was back then, and I imagine it's going to be the same. But uh, yeah, what, what what is it about Jannah that right now is like exciting to you? Well, the 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 biggest thing that excites me about Jannah is the 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 chance that we actually get to meet Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. That's exactly what you said. And the people of Jannah get to see Allah. That's that's yeah, like that's exactly there's no that, that's the that's the cherry on the top of whatever dessert you want to build. But for me. Like in this current situation, one of the greatest things I would look forward to if we're able to generate freedom from all of this hardship, difficulty, you know, no worries, no stress, no sadness, no illness, no death, no tyranny, no oppression, no murder. You know, all of this stuff that we see that is evil around the world comes to a finite end. And that's what wow. I try to tell brothers that are going through so much and sisters are going through so much is realize that evil as an existence has a finite end. On the day of judgment, Allah will end every single bit of it. 
And the Prophet ﷺ told us, when on the day of judgment, death will be brought as, you know, as an animal. Death will be brought, which death includes all of the sickness, illness, you know, all of the, the darkness of this world will be brought in front of the people. And Allah will ask, this is going to be such a, an amazing time. It will, people will be asked, and this is going to be an amazing time for the people of Jannah, by the way. The people of Jahannam, this is bad, real bad. Mm. Allah will ask, do you recognize this? And everyone will say, yes, this is death. And death also, you know, includes all of the darkness, the badness, the evil, all of that. And then Allah will have it slaughtered and say, today is the end of that. There's no more of that. There's no more death. You know what I mean? And for the people of Jannah, that also means there's no more pain, there's no more suffering, there's no more sadness, there's no more illness. For the people of Jahannam, it will continue for as long as they remain there. This is why it's so important that the people of Jannah realize that this has an end. This is why we strive for that, so we can bring an end to our darkness, bring an end to our pain, bring an end to our sadness, bring an end to our misery. That is why we shoot for Jannah so hard. I feel like I don't listen to, uh, or I don't think enough about, not I don't think enough about Jannah, but I have mentioned on a previous podcast that when I think about the Akhirah, I, I, the thought that I think about the most is the Day of Judgment, mm. Yom Al-Qiyamah. I, I can't seem to get past that in my brain. Like, I can't seem to get myself to think of, of Jannah or Jahannam too much. It's like that day is like... Perhaps it's just been described. I, I like you. Like you, you just mentioned something about Yom Qiyamah that I didn't. I, 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 I didn't know. But yet I'm constantly hearing things about Yom Qiyamah that I didn't know. And it's and it's like you think to yourself, Subhanallah, that's just one day. But like I'm now 26. I'm still learning new things about this day. Like you learn about the Sirat, then you learn about hell being dragged uh, by 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 all of these angels, then you learn about the books, uh, your books kind of flying. You learn about people putting their hands behind their back because they don't want to catch their d book of deeds mm. in their left hand. Um, uh, and and so on and so forth. Like so many parts of your the, the shade and and wanting to get in the shade, the 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 the, the being being questioned and um so many things that I'm I'm constantly learning new things about that day that it's so hard in my brain to look past it and, and anytime I think of the Akhirah the first thing that comes to mind is Yom Qiyamah but I don't necessarily see that as a bad thing because that day is just the importance of that day gets more and more uh, becomes more and more important in my mind because with the more I learn about it the more I realize first of all how long that day is going to be and secondly like the amount of things that are going to happen on that day um, oh, it's just it's just amazing and so scary and and just so many emotions like at the same time um, when you think of the day of judgment like w what what comes to mind no f fear should be the, the first thing that comes to mind for the day of judgment that's the whole reason why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has explained to us all the terrors uh, of the day of judgment and all the names <laughs> of the day of judgment you can go through name after name after name um but, uh, you know, one thing that we have to try to do as Muslims is balance that so that that fear does not turn into despondency. You know what I mean? So that you don't start fearing the day of judgment so much that you despair meeting that day. You know what I mean? Mm. You despair meeting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because then you can become like the man who, you know, told his children, burn me alive and spread my ashes all over the place so Allah can't put me back together. Um, you know, we should have perpetual fear it should cause the prophet alayhi salatu wasalam said that surah al naba amma yatasa'alun um surah al waqia and two i think it was two more he said those chapters of the quran made my hair go gray before it was time because of the horrors that await but never do we find the prophet alayhi salatu wasalam telling us to be despondent of the mercy of allah and always you know taught us about the the, the mercy of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that the mercy of Allah is the reason why we are going to make it as Muslims, if we make it, inshallah. Uh, that his mercy would always overcome his anger, etc. So we're supposed to be in a place of balance. As the Muslim, they're supposed to remain in, in between balance of hope mm -hmm. in Allah's mercy and fear of his anger. And you should never let one of those overcome the other. And this is what happens if you look at like even deviant sects of Muslims. If you want to go too far right, too far left. Too far right? leans too far on fear. They lean too far on the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and, and according to them, everybody's in hell except them. You know what I mean? Um, and, and, and the other side with liberalism, 
the whole kumbaya, everybody's okay, we're all going to Jannah, don't worry about it, it's going to be a big party. No, no, no. You, you see, they, they, they've gone too far into the extremes. As the Muslim, we're supposed to stay grounded in that middle path to where we are fearful of Allah's punishment, therefore we try to avoid sin, and if we don't avoid it, we repent from it. And then we're also hopeful of Allah's mercy, which allows us to continue to work towards goodness, to work towards doing that which we can to help ourselves to get there and also depend upon the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because he wouldn't have told us so much about his mercy if he didn't want us to depend upon that, if that f makes sense. He wouldn't have used every chapter of the Quran except for chapter Tawbah to introduce himself as Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim. So we have to keep that balance, inshallah. SubhanAllah. Reflecting on these, it's, it's no surprise that your podcast is called Reflections because whenever I'm talking to you, I, I really do start reflecting and it's... Uh, it's uh, you, 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 Allahum Barak, have a captivating way of of, of explaining kind of these uh, uh, concepts in Islam. It's uh, it, 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 like I said, it captivates you, uh, brothers and sisters. Those those on the stream, um, we're one hour in, and so um, we're open uh, to. I'll do my very best to get your questions to Ustad Yusha um, as you guys ask them. So feel free to chuck your questions in, and I'll do my very best uh, to get them in as we round up, kind of over the next thirty minutes or, or so. Um, our live streams tend to be a bit shorter than our regular episodes, just to make sure that nothing, while everything's going well technically, we we don't kind of uh, get ahead of ourselves. Um, there was a few people asking about. Uh, your kind of like PC set up and stuff. But I think that for those people, um, they need to sign up to the Discord because otherwise yeah, simply what's going to happen they, is... Yeah, it's going to become a mess. They can simply, yeah. two, two ways you can find out all of these details because we have that automated where they can just type in a command and get everything. Join join Discord, um, uh, which the link is in my social media. You can find the link on my social media or my link tree. Just go to linktree.com. I, I, and actually not .com, it's like link... Oh, it's, like dot e. it's weird. Yeah, I don't know yeah, why yeah, they yeah. did that. But you know Linktree. Linktree and then just hash uh, slash Yusha Evans and you'll find all of there. You can go to our Discord and find it there. Or you can join me on my Twitch stream and, and under the bot commands as well. You can find out all my PC specs and all of that stuff's automated. That's the one thing I love about the whole streaming world is a lot of stuff is automated uh, for you. And I, I stream Monday, Wednesdays, Fridays and the schedule's on my my Twitch. Twitch.tv slash Yusha E. Yusha E. Okay, we got the um, the questions coming in now. I think uh, uh, one of the uh, things that I wanted to discuss, uh, I always love when I have someone like yourself on a podcast. Um, it, I see it as an opportunity to um, to just like always like discuss these um, different like elements of Islam and like ask about them and stuff. And um, something that happened, that happened recently that really made me reflect. Right, is I was driving to work. I was driving into the studio. Um, this is about a week or two ago now. Mm. And as I'm driving into the studio, there's like a round, there's a roundabout. But what, what happens is that there's traffic lights at this roundabout. And as the traffic lights obviously uh, allow you to go, the traffic lights on the other side, obviously, are, are red, right? So they, they, people can't go. And so, alhamdulillah, I was, I was driving within the speed limit. I wasn't looking at my phone. My eyes was on the road because for me, it was green. And I was, I was turning on this roundabout within the speed limit. There was a, a, a lady on kind of the other side who, for some reason, I don't know, she, she was just in her own world at the time, was driving so fast. It was kind of around the time of people trying to get to work and stuff. Uh, she was driving so fast and she obviously thought that her traffic lights were green when mm. they weren't, they were red. And she just like literally paces in and I'm trying to like show you. So like, let's say this is my car going like that. I'm turning right here and she's coming from here and she just goes like that, like the speed of lightning. And just because my eyes were on the road and Alhamdulillah, I was driving within the limit, I was able to quickly swerve. Otherwise, here's what would have happened. And this is the bit that, that, that made me reflect. What would have happened is I would have ended up going directly into her um, her side of the car because her car was going like this and my car was facing facing her car because I was turning that way um, I'm doing a really bad job of portraying this image but I I, my car directly would have gone into her door where she's driving oh subhanAllah we just got another super chat Jazakallah khair on to uh, Sahib Nawaz Sahib Nawaz uh, 48.99 that name sounds familiar 
Oh, does it? I may have met Suhaib somewhere. Uh, a massive Jazakallah khair to you for uh, supporting the podcast. Like I said, and I always will continue to say it means so much uh, for you to support the podcast. Um, okay, I'm going to try and round the story up. So, so because the, the benefit is better than the story. Uh, it's The benefit, to be honest, is, is really, over the last couple of weeks, really made me reflect and, and, and change my life. I would have gone straight into her. I would go into her where she's driving. I wouldn't have gone yep, face on her, her driver door. Into, I would go into her driver door. We call where that being T-boned. You would have T-boned her. Right. So what would have happened, Sheikh, is there's a very high chance that she would have, it would, the, my car would have gone right into her. She could have literally died, right? And I wouldn't, most likely would not have because my car, the whole front of my car would have taken the brunt of yeah, it. Yeah, it would have. I'd gone into, yeah. directly into her body, right? And so what it made me realize is, okay, first of all, a life would have been lost. Um, but perhaps selfishly, Perhaps selfishly, admittedly, what it made me think is also that that would have been me done for manslaughter, right? It wouldn't have been murder yeah. because I didn't intentionally kill her. Um, but I would have gone out down for manslaughter because my car would have gone into another person's car. She would have lost her life and that would be me done for manslaughter. Now, manslaughter, the 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 uh, sentence for manslaughter is up to judge's discretion, right? Like with, with in the UK with, with, with murder. When I was studying uh, law in A-levels, it was at the time a minimum of 15 years, I believe. But, uh, you know, so it was, it was mandatory life, which is a minimum of 15 years. Uh, whereas manslaughter is when somebody dies unintentionally or like not as harsh as murder and therefore like it can be life, but it's discretionary, right? So I could have got up to life, right? I, that's the point. Now, what I reflected on is there was a moment in my life where Allah, it made me realize that Allah is in control of all things, right? It, it reminded me of that because it was a moment in my life where I was doing nothing wrong, mm. nothing wrong. My eyes was on the road. My tr the speed of my car was driving according to the speed limit. Mm -hmm. But because of somebody else's actions, I could have spent the rest of my life in prison and never seen my son again. I yeah. could have never seen my son again. And that maybe. And I thought to myself, what could I have changed in that situation? And the truth, Sheikh, nothing. nothing. I, I, there's nothing I could change. Which shows that we have to submit to Allah. I have to be grateful to Allah because He is in control of everything. You could say, you know what? Now, nah, I'm like, as long as I'm smart, as long as I'm, my eyes are always on the road, as long as I'm always patient, as long as I'm always like this, as long as I'm always that, nothing could go wrong for me because I'm taking every single precaution. Guess what? That day, I was taking every single precaution, but it was not in my hands. That woman was speeding. That woman ran a red light. That Everything that happened was not in my control at all. And I was the one. First of all, she would have lost her life, which, which understandably, I know I'm kind of like almost going past that and selfishly thinking about myself. But if we just do for a second, like, think about that i would i could potentially be in prison for the rest of my life or at least a few years based on no no nothing that i could have changed it was not like something that was before and it made me realize that you know what if that's not a reminder to submit to allah who is in control of all things at all times then i don't know what else is yeah 100 percent. yeah we we don't we're not in control as we think we are we can only control you know small circumstances that were, were within our grasp you know, like I can choose what I eat today and what I don't eat today. But the end result of all of our affairs, I can choose like I can think it's 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 a limited free will. Like I can say after this, I can choose to go upstairs and eat a bagel. And I could say that's within my power. I could go upstairs and I could die before I make it up those stairs. I can't say about anything. That's why we're supposed to always anything that we say about the future that's not happening right now. We say, inshallah, after I eat, I'm gonna go upstairs and have a bagel, inshallah. Because we are realizing that it is only if Allah wills. I can't get up off this chair unless Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wills me to do so. Unless he grants me the ability to do so. So our lives are, are completely in the control of Allah. Jalla but it's in our, always in our best interest for those who believe. It's in the um, best interest uh, of those who believe. I had a question there. Said, were you angry off that phase? Well, I wasn't actually angry. I, I, I actually didn't even... I think I beeped her at, as soon as it was happening and I swerved my car into right lane. But I didn't have anger because I thought she looked so scared because she realized that what she done was wrong that I thought, look, I'm not going to, nothing's going to, like, I'm not going to gain anything by being angry here. And I just carried on uh, driving as usual because I think, like, you could see in her eyes and, like, her facial expression that she realized what had happened. Yeah. I, I, for some reason, I, I, I never get road rage. Like, I get frustrated about so many things, but road rage just doesn't seem to be something that happens to me. I have no idea why. Um, 
Uh, Sheikh, I, I have actually uh, 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 another question, actually. Um, this is probably the longest time, this is probably the longest consecutive time that you haven't done a khutbah for in a masjid in, on a Friday. What's yeah. that like? This is the longest consecutive time on a number of accounts for me, not having been to the masjid. Mm. Longest consecutive time I have not set foot into a masjid. Um, longest consecutive time I have not given a khutbah. Longest second of consecutive time in 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 the past 15 years I haven't left my home and gone anywhere. I've slept in my own house every single night. All of it is surreal and different. Mm. You know, I I could handle the being at home every day because traveling is a, is 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 a fitna, but not having that connection to the masjid is 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 hurting me. That's that's a problem. Um, and 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 you know you try to find a way to keep that connection to not only Allah but to the other Muslims. Um, without that, that's another reason why I created you know kind of this like this online community with Discord and 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 the streaming is that in in lieu of us being able to go to the masajid, even the ones here that are open, it's like you're praying six feet apart. You gotta wear a mask, bring your own thing, take a temperature at the door. They write write your name down for contact tracing. It's like look. I'll go back to the masjid when it's when it's safe to go back properly in the way when we pray the way the Prophet ﷺ taught us to pray. But in lieu of that, we have to keep jama'a because as Muslims, we cannot survive as solitary individuals. We were not designed like that. The Allah come, called us an ummah and an ummah has connections. The Prophet ﷺ said, stick to the jama'a, stick to the body of Muslims. Um, that communal identity is something that is like make or break for us. So in lieu of that, we have to try to find our best way to keep that connection with people uh, in, in other ways, you know, reaching out to people. Like for me, I'm, I'm not the best at doing this because my phone is always going off with people on WhatsApp and, and, and get in touch with me. And I try to respond as much as I can, but trying to keep connections with people, chat to people, talk to people, because you never know who might be going through something right now and can't come to the masjid and let it out, you know, and cry to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the masjid floor you know, where people feel like, they're closer to Allah. Uh, they they can't come, you know, and just, you know, kick it with the brothers or kick it with the sisters and and kind of, you know, get that uh, tension or anxiety out. So we need to also make sure that we're checking on up on people because uh, mental health issues right now are reaching peak. You know, like they're 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 exploding with all of these shutdowns and lockdowns and craziness of the world and people not knowing what's going on next. My own anxiety, which I've talked about in reflections and with you, you know, has has started to flare here and there. It's it. I've, I've kept it under control. Alhamdulillah. I've kept myself busy. That's how I I, I deal with it. But you know, I, I feel for people who don't have these types of issues under control. They're probably just manifesting themselves in all kinds of unreal ways right now. Suicide rates are up. Abuse is up. Alcoholism's up. Drugs are up. Like everything is going through the roof. Unfortunately, the cure is becoming more harmful than the afflict than the illness and, and that's just uh, something that we have to learn to deal with speaking on that we had a we have a question from Roma saying um how to deal with mental illness especially in lockdown and what to do when going through an episode i understand that's a vague question because you don't know the extent to people's like um suffering but um but perhaps like a general answer and that would be really cool reach out for help ask for help this is a problem with the muslim community it's, it this is a general problem with most people in mental health but for the Muslim community, it's it's even so more more taboo um, than than it is amongst the rest of the world. This is why I've been talking about it for many years now, trying to, you know, pull, you know, lift the curtain off of it being so taboo for Muslims to be able to discuss uh, mental illness. But if you have, or if you're suffering with, you know, a, a, a mental issue, whether it be depression, and 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 right now there's a lot of people becoming depressed because nobody knows what the world's gonna look like. Tomorrow, six months from now, a year from now, I don't know when I'll ever get back to doing what I used to do before. Anxiety, uh, you know, whether it be bipolarism, what, whatever mental ailment you have, reach out, ask for help. Do not be ashamed or afraid to ask for help. It is actually sh more strength to ask for help than to den deny the, the, the issue exists. Um, so reach out. There are plenty of online vehicles where you can just go online and talk to actual counselors and talk to mental health experts free of charge. You can find those resources online. This is also why I'm working on another project, which me and you discussed, which I'm not letting out of the bag yet, you know, to try to, you know, 
provide for this niche outlet of Muslims who are suffering with not only, you know, mental illness, because there's some mental illness that if you brought it to me, I would say you need to go see a professional. You need to go to an actual, you know, psychologist or psychiatrist because this is something that you need help with. But for things that, you know, people need counseling, sometimes one of the biggest things people need when it comes to mental health, when it comes to like depression or anxiety uh, and things of this nature, they need someone to talk to that will listen to them without judgment. Someone that'll just listen without any type of judgment who will listen and, and give them some solid advice. And, and that usually does so, that literally cured my anxiety, was talking to a therapist, somebody who was not judgmental, learning how I process uh, my, ang my anxiety, process my feelings and emotions, and it helped me to get through so much. So sometimes you just need that. So we're, we're working on something, inshallah, that hopefully we'll be launching within the next couple of weeks that will try to provide some outlet for people who really don't feel like they have anybody else that they can talk to, inshallah. You speak about your, your anxiety and your, and your mindset. I know we've spoken about it loads of times before, but going back to what I mentioned about when I'm with you in person, Often when I'm with you in person, I said earlier that you come across extremely focused, right? And like mm. you're 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 very um like regimented in your in your focus and your and, and your mind power in your in your mind set <laughs> mind power in your mindset. Um, okay, I do you ever feel like your brain works too fast for your body to like catch up? Because that's how I sometimes feel. Like sometimes I feel like I have all of these ideas and stuff, and and I can't. Um, I, I can't physically do everything like I, there's either like um, like I just can't get it all done and and sometimes my brain's going so fast and I'm I'm struggling to like sleep and so I I, I was I was speaking to my uh, my teacher Ustad Yahya about this uh, last week. Please give um, him my salams, brother Yahya. Yeah, Yahya Rabi, correct? Yeah, mashallah. Yes. Yeah. Please give him salams um, from us. I would, inshallah. And um, you know, he, his advice was was so helpful. I said uh, the the other day I um I had I had really bad night's sleep right for 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 another reason I think I was just like up late and I had to wake up early like Zachary had woken me up or whatever and so I was, I was you know those times like when you're so tired that the whole day feels like a dream like you know you need to sleep you can't even function and so what happened is in the middle of the day I. I, I, when Zachary went for a nap, I was like, you know what, I'm going to nap with him. And I, I, I decided I'm going to nap. And I was so tired, I know that I could have fallen asleep. But for some reason, I was, it was like I was lying there for two hours and my brain did not shut off and I could not sleep because I just had this one like idea that was just so strong that I was just thinking about how to implement it and then the like nooks and crannies of it that I just couldn't end up sleeping do you mm. ever feel like that because you look so I and it doesn't come across on video on video you look very calm you look very calculated you look very relaxed but I been with you in person on numerous occasions and that 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 in person is like I can see like through your eyes like behind it that it's it's pure focus. I, I, I don't know such a, it's such a good way. You're so focused on on what you need to do. You're so focused at task at hand. And I feel like you might go through the same thing as me. Not yeah, trying. I, to, I, I, and I, I that do. sounds so arrogant. It sounds like I'm like so advo oh, yeah, my brain's no, no, advanced. No. I don't mean it in that regard. I just mean that my, I I can't. My mind it. works way faster than I'm able to keep up with. This is also why I'm not a good writer. I've wanted to write books for so long, and I've I've working on like. A book for my dissertation and things like that, but my brain works faster than than I can write, so it never really comes out properly. So I just yeah. need to dictate. I need to dictate things and then kind of write them down. That's why I'm a better orator um, than I am writer, and I type very fast. That's why I also make a lot of typos because I try to type as fast as my brain works. Um, but I, I'm I'm worse than you is that I won't sleep. I won't I won't even go to bed like. And, and, and my missus will tell you this, like I, if I have something that's unfinished and I go up and I try to sleep, I'll wake up at three in the morning and be back down oh, trying to God. trying to fix it. You know, what I mean, like I'll, I'll get up three in the morning like no, I can't I can't sleep. And I've learned yes, now yeah. to I would rather sleep late. Like I, I'd rather sleep at one, two o'clock after I've finished what it is that I task at hand, because now I know I'll sleep properly than cutting it off halfway. That's a problem. Oh. That's not a good thing, by the way. That's not a good habit. You need to be able to learn to like, OK, shut off point. But I, 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 that's something I haven't figured out for myself is getting that shut off yeah. point saying, OK, I'm done. I can't do anything else right now. I'm tapping out. I'm walking away. Now I'll push myself and push myself and push myself. Oh, I, it's not I, a good I thing. I completely resonate with that. I completely resonate with that. And it's like 
but it, like, I, I sometimes like try and like combat it when I'm like arguing people about with people about it and say that like I feel like it's that that also has given me the determination to try and like pull off a project and try and like succeed in a project. But at the same time, yeah, it's like you need to be able to turn it off. You need to be able to like have a button to switch it off. And sometimes you can't like, it's, it's like you can't have one without having the other. You can't like be so passionate about a project to the point where you want to succeed. Because it's such a, this is such a difficult world. It's like such a dog eat dog world, um, for lack of a better term, where everybody's kind of scratching and craw clawing for like, um, anything like whether it's like you trying to build um the muslim let's like, let's let's talk about the, the the muslim gaming league right like mgl you trying to build mgl is such a pure it's something with such a pure intention inshallah but you have to understand that what you're competing for is attention because mm. what you're competing for is for the muslim gamers to come to mgl so that you can give khair and so you're comp you are regardless of whether even if you're not doing it for any gain right any like uh, dunya gain you're still competing with those who are doing it for dunya gain because there's other people who are non-muslim who like who you want said, that same people's attention and they, that. they want those people's attention so whether you like it or not you have to start like in this like doggy dog world of like uh, saying no like how can i improve my project so that i can combat those guys so that i can uh, like grab these guys' attention and 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 give khair even though it sounds so oh man it sounds so like unhumane but it's the truth of it it's just the truth of it yeah for me for me what this is a lesson i learned with with doing this um um i because i i realized that that was going to be there and then it would be stress about okay are people coming are people watching you know and things of that nature i i said okay i'm going to study how to do this properly you know i looked at some of the biggest streamers out there and what they were doing and how they were doing it and what their setup was you know i looked at some people who are really and i'm not even going to give them shout outs because i don't want people to go watch because it might be music in the background or whatnot that you know teach you how to do this on a super super high level and i spent months doing that um then i said you know what what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this up with the best intention I can to the highest level I can and the results of it, I'm going to leave alone. I'm going to leave alone. I'm going to take this uh, field of dreams concept. If you build it and you build it right, if they are meant to come, they will come. If this is something that I'm doing that is a pure space for the right reasons and Allah wants people to, to be in this space, he'll bring them. He'll bring them. That's it. And, and that has kept me away from so much in the past as well, like social media. That has kept me away from doing clickbait videos, you know, just so you'll watch them, you know, which everybody has the tendency to want to do, like get that viewership, get that subscribership. It's, it's you know, kept me from worrying about Instagram lately, taking all of them, you know, the algorithm has been hacking me left and right. Like, you know, my, yeah. my, my, my reach on Instagram is just trash right now. You know, um, so that and 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 it irritates me because I'm I'm trying to do something, but I, it hasn't got to the point to where I'm up in arms about it, you know, and it affects my sleep and it's worrying me. That I've had to set that standard from the beginning. That look, if you're trying to do this for the right reasons, and it doesn't work, so be it. If you go on to stream and give a reminder, and 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 yes, you might have, you know, uh, close to a million people combined between all your social media accounts, and you have four people watching your stream. Give those four people the intention of why you came here. Make it what you wanted for them. And if more people are meant to come, they come. And that's it. And if everybody stops watching you and you notice that for six months, shut it down and figure out something else because this is not what Allah wanted you to do. I had to have that clear in my mind from day one or else you will lose your marbles. You will lose your yeah, mind. You're, you're right. You're right. It's such a profound reminder. Because if it's not enjoyable and I'm doing it just for the viewership and I'm doing it just for the ticks and the clicks and the reminders, then... I'm taking all, I might as well just go back to doing that with my children in my free time because I actually enjoyed it. If you take the enjoyment out of it, it becomes just work. And I'm not a person, even though I work very hard in the certain things I do, I don't want to work for the rest of my life, if that makes sense. I want my work to be enjoyable. The income I bring in, I want it to be because it's something that I get some benefit out of doing, not just helping another person get a get a bigger house and a bigger car and go on a vacation in in Maui no 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 i, I want to try to do myself some benefit for my family and my akhirah inshallah inshallah you have to uh, have a hustler's mindset for good deeds that's sorry. it
Ustad, I, I, we, we're gonna we're drawing towards the end of the podcast, but before we go, um, I, I want to utilize the time that I have with you and ask you a personal question. So you're w- welcome to not answer it, but I have a feeling that you will because um, you're you're very loving uh, and uh, and uh, and open with me. So I really appreciate that. And the question is about ch- raising children. Okay, so as you know, I have a very young child. He's one years old, and um, it's um, at what age did you start? teaching your children um like stuff like the arabic language and and what what age is too early like where where can you start bringing in like letters and all of that kind of stuff because right now i'm trying to i'm because now that i'm starting to understand zachary's brain right and he's one years old and so um what i've understood is that i can teach him something and over time as in, you know, after a bit of repetition, he can do it, right? So um, I, I tested it originally with uh, the ball, so that we have a little football in the, hou- in the house. And now I can say to him, where's the ball? And he'll go and grab the ball. And I've taught him to, like, pass it to me and me pass it to him. And so he's understood that, okay? And so then I thought, okay, let's try and get a bit more intricate. Uh, and so I started with, you know, the big building blocks of Lego. I would like mm. sh- try and explain to him how it works. Like it's a block, you put one on and you can take it off. So it connects to each other. And at first he really wasn't understanding it. And now he's got it to the point where he understands. And so he can take it off now. So I'll put it on. And he was, so he now understands that there's a connection there. Right. And so I always want to jump to going Alif, Alif. Alif, ba ba ba, because the sooner I get him on that, like the the, the better in my mind. So, how, at what age can you start bringing that stuff in? Um, you know, f- for me, I, I would say that um, I, I I I'll give you some general advice, but I'm 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 a bit hypocritical in this because I've been on the road so much that I you know haven't really put my my attention towards teaching my kid this like I should. Um, trying to do more now, so I'm gone, but we we got some catching up to do. Because I know if not, my missus is going to be like, mm, you need to be on the same advice you give everybody else. But, um, you know, it, you have to it's it kind of judge it per child when they start being able to absorb that information. You start realizing they're starting to understand information and be repetitive of things. You can start putting it in there because they might not connect the two and two. Like they might learn for Aleph Bata and not even know what in the world that means. But that's becoming a part of their memory process. If, if you, you understand later on, if you when they start to understand language a little bit more and you say Aleph, they're going to re- recognize that. Yeah, I know that. I know that word. And then you can connect it to what it means. You know, like you can teach a, tid, a kid to say red, blue and green before they realize that it's a color. You know, what I mean, they, they can connect those two together. You know, so as soon as you see them starting to wanting to absorb information, then you should give that to them. And I know I'm going to get railed after this for for I need to be a bit more on this myself. It's just, you know, getting all the work that I've been doing lately is really preoccupying like the front processes of my brain. Um, but yes, as, as soon as they start, you know, wanting to have that uh, uh, interaction with you and start learning things, I, I, I would suggest that as well. You know, because kids learn from us. It's what we pick up. It's not so much what we teach them. That is part of it. The main part of what your children are going to get is 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 your behavior, watching you. What you do, if you want your children to learn to read the Quran and, 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 and be happy with reading the Quran, they have to see you doing it. Okay. Uh, you seem Ch- to have frozen, Ustad. I don't know if you froze as, as human else. beings. So if oh, you want you your children to, to do things, you, you have you have to do you have to be with them. You know, my, my, my daughter is that same way. She's she's so happy that I've been home for nine months, by the way, and she's probably watching this. So I have to give Miko, that's her gamer tag, Miko a shout out. Um, she She's the one that does a lot of things with me. She's always on the live streams with me uh, and things of that nature. Um, she's happy that I'm home for, for nine months uh, and probably wouldn't care if I ever go anywhere again. But, you know, it's 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 one of those things you have to learn to balance that with your children when they want to take things in and then also learn through play. The younger children, the younger that children are, they learn through play. They, they, you know, rather than sitting them down saying, I'm going to teach you this, they kind of learn through play and enjoyment until they get old enough to where they comprehend why you're saying sit down and they have to learn things. Amazing. So making it enjoyable for them will stick in their brain faster. 
Jazakallah khairan. I, I really appreciate your time, your advice, your your inspiration, your nasiha. Uh, I appreciate you giving us time for Freshly Grounded, as you always do. Uh, I don't even know what number of episodes this is that you've done Freshly Grounded. It must be like five or six five, at least. Five or six, yeah, at least. Yeah, and I really appreciate it. And, and the audience here, like, uh, we all love uh, hearing from you. So a big Jazakallah khairan. And thank you for always giving us your time. It's um, always my pleasure, Akhi, and I'm right here. And, 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 and for the, for the con- foreseeable future, I'm going to be right here. I mean, yeah, I, I don't, I don't literally. even really go anywhere. I leave the house for necessities. That's it. I, I, I'm home, but I stay extremely, extremely busy with all the different projects and filmings and recordings and streaming. Like I, I stay, I'm almost more busy now than I was when I was on the road. Because the good thing about being on the road is you could always use the excuse that, hey, I'm on the road. <laughs> you know, I'll get back to you later. I'm on a plane. I didn't have to respond to you. Now it's like everybody knows that they have access to reach me 24/7. He can't say he's on a plane. He can't say he's in another country. Um, so, but yeah, if you need me again, we're right here, inshallah. And we'll have and to get uh, you on when we when we start doing the live streams on YouTube. We'll have to get you on, inshallah. Those are coming up please. soon. We just have to do Thank them separately because when you're a Twitch affiliate, you cannot stream to Twitch and YouTube at the same time. Uh, it's part of your oh, agreement. Really? Yeah, it's it's an agreement. You can't use like uh, Streamyard and stream to both of them. It's a violation oh, wow. of 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 uh, Twitch service. Uh, they will they will ban you for that. It has to be on on twitch for at least uh i think it's like 12 hours or something like that before you can put the video then onto youtube so we have to do separately we have to stream to twitch separately and to youtube separately but our youtube streams are going to be just islam islamic based we're just going to be doing and mental health uh that's it that's all our youtube streams but it's going to be in this using the same setup we're going to stream i'm really looking forward to your youtube streams and um and any yeah like i said before uh, anything we can do to help, please do let us know and we will do our very best because um, you've always been so kind to us. Um, Absolutely. Uh, and if anybody wants to catch us the Twitch, they can find them, yushae, twitch.com slash yushae and our Discord is uh, on my Twitch as well so you can find it there. There we go. Jazakallah khairan. And, and uh, a big thank you to um, A, user A for the super chat. Again, uh, 200 Mashallah. SEK. What's SEK, Sheikh? What, 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 I, what, I don't uh, even know what what uh what currency is sek sek currency but uh thank you so much and scandinavian kroner is that what it is you might it is swedish kroner ah I, I was close you see that's too much traveling for you i knew it was something probably kroner swedish scandinavian they're over there yeah. living nice over there they're, they're like they're living like nothing's ever happened really yeah Scandin- most of Scandinavian, especially Sweden, has never gone into any lockdowns, never done any restrictions, no mask mandates, nothing. Why is it? What's the secret? Is it because it's cold? No, it's they decided that it was that they didn't want to make the cure worse than the disease. Yeah, but that it, was is it. it. Is it is it affecting? Is it affecting a lot of people out there? No, no. It has a ninety nine point nine nine seven percent. Survival rate for most people under the age of 70 anyway. In reality, these things could have been said a lot better because we do know that there's a vulnerable part of the population. People with pre-existing conditions and what is called comorbidities should be, you know, quarantining and staying away from certain things right now. The elderly, especially elderly with pre-existing conditions, should be protected. But to make it, you know, kind of a one-size-fit-all solution is problematic. Because children, ages 8, 0 to 12, the statistics have come out that there is a 99.997% chance they are going to be absolutely fine. 0.003 chance that they will, you know, get seriously ill or die. They don't need to be locked down for age, our age range. You know, it is it, it, just showing that this is this one size fit all kind of plan is not really not really very functioning because the the cure has become worse than the illness but that's that's kind of for people to expect governments to efficiently do anything i mean that's just i don't understand it today people are like you know oh this should work the government told us when did the government ever interest to do anything that was good for everybody mm-hmm. never never not once in the history of western civilization has the the powers that be done things that are good for everybody we already know that so but for ourselves we have to do what we can with 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 what in the means that we have you know what i mean we have to that's it we're we, we are where we are uk you guys are still on lockdown minnesota yeah. we just went back on a on a, a four week pretty much lockdown everything is closed 
except for retail. Um, so, you know, you have to do what you have to do. That's it. For what, what we have, you have to work with what work with what you have. That's kind of the whole reason why I've done all this that I've done now is you have to learn to work with what you've got. Yeah, I imagine we won't see you down in the UK anytime soon. I doubt it. I doubt it. Even if I got on a flight sad. to the UK right now, they might not let me in. And, and if they did, I'd have to quarantine and I don't know, some weird place for two weeks. So well, you always, no. you've always got a home here. Uh, yeah, with me, so don't ever stress. About and I wouldn't that. want to go to the UK if I can't go out to eat, man. That's what that's half that's of the true. reason I come see you guys is that's to true. eat. Half that's of the true. reason I enjoy London is because I get to eat. Um, so yeah, yeah I'll, I'll wait until I'll wait until we go back to 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 not normal because that's not going to happen. There is no normal like those of you who remember pre-COVID. That's gone. That's never coming back. We know this. Yeah, really. It, Never coming back. People will never behave like that for in in, in our lifetime. You know what I mean? How People long do you are think always... until live? How long do you think until like live crowd events? I know I'm dragging this conversation. I'm so sorry. No, uh, I don't think it's going to happen anytime soon. You know, anytime soon. We'll see what happens with this whole. And I would say once they roll out this vaccine, this rush vaccine, and uh, that, that that should ease things up. But it all depends on what they want. What is the end? What is the agenda here? Because if the agenda is public health, then once the vaccines are rolled out and people start taking them to the point to where there's herd immunity, things should go. You know, things should open, open back mm -hmm. up. They won't go back to normal. Every if you if you see somebody sneeze in Tesco for the, you know for the next 50 years, people are going to run from them like they have you know Ebola. Um, but that should be it. But if the agenda is something else then we don't know because they could always introduce another one. This one could be over with. And in the end of 2021, there could be some new coronavirus because coronavirus is just a number of the common cold is a coronavirus. The common flu is a coronavirus. There's a bunch of different illnesses um, that fall under the term coronavirus. So the end of 2021, there could be a new one. It could be COVID-21. And then here we go again. So it all depends on the agenda. All depends on the agenda. Oh, it's getting interesting now. Just as we're ending the podcast. Jazakallah yep. uh, khair, Sheikh, for your time. And uh, thank pleasure. you to so everyone who, um, who, who who listened and who watched live. And uh, Sheikh, if you stay there, I'm going to end the podcast, but I'll, uh, I'll, uh, I'll just stay there for a second. No worries. Um, pleasure. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.